Thank you for joining us today at Caldwell Banker Professionals. We'd like to welcome you to our first segment of Ask Your Realtor. I'm Kim Tusanat, and this is our managing broker, Stacy Prees, here at Caldwell Banker Professionals. Hi there. Stacy, my clients ask me why buy a home instead of rent, and it takes me back to one of my first clients when I started. It was a local teacher that called me regarding a rental property that I had, and he was explaining to me what he was looking for in a property and what he was paying in rent. And I used that time to convince him that it was he should be buying instead of renting. And he became one of my first clients. Can you tell me why a, per, why a client should buy instead of rent? Yeah, in, in addition to the financial advantage there, you know, you can, you can buy a home for almost the same and often the same or less than you can rent for. Um, there's some other really great benefits. Um, I mean, there's tax benefits. If you're, if you're itemizing on your taxes still, you've got those tax benefits as well as, um, you know, your, your write-offs um, for purchasing a home. There's a few of those expenses that are, that are tax deductible. As well as you know, appreciation is a, is a big part. Um, gaining that equity in your home through appreciation, Which and we're as you pay down the as you pay down the mortgage, is kind of like a built-in savings account. Um, and then, of course, you know, being a homeowner allows you know for um, predictability, um, freedom uh, to do whatever you want with your property, which um, you know often makes it feel like home. And um, there's a certain stability that comes with, with home ownership, you know? So, I mean, all of those factor into to make um, buying a home a lot more desirable than running often. And homeowners are definitely seeing appreciation in their property in the oh, market. Oh, yeah, these over days, the past you know, we've. Six months. We've, yeah, we've seen in the last, last year we saw about 8.5% appreciation. So that's pretty good savings over, you know, five to seven years that somebody's in a home. And that's money in their pocket and not their landlord's pocket. Yes. When choosing a realtor, why, a, why choose a realtor and what, why would you recommend a Caldwell Banker professional? Well, you know, when choosing a realtor, there's, I, I would say, interview more than one individual. I think that we provide the best services, of course, but um, you know, there's some things that you should really consider asking a realtor. Um, you know, we think of the regular things like how long have you been doing this and stuff, but, um, you know, it's important to ask them possibly what their business philosophy is. You want to know that you're on the same page. Um, you know, how many buyers have you represented or your company represented in the past year or past six months? Um, can you can you recommend service providers to me? Because you know throughout the process, there's going to be more than just a realtor involved. You you want somebody who can recommend lenders, um, residential inspectors, insurance providers. Um, those are all things that you can rely on with a realtor. Um, in addition, you know we as realtors, not just real estate agents, are held to um, a higher standard than your typical professional. We have the longest standing. Um, uh, code of ethics uh, amongst professionals, and um, that's that. There's a lot to be said for that. You know, we're held to a standard, um, so that's I mean, a couple of the good reasons to work with a realtor, and you know, good questions to ask if you're interviewing for realtors. What should a buyer do to prepare for house hunting? Um, I think most buyers have no idea going into it what you know what they should do before they even get to the process of, of you know looking for a, how, a home. Um, you know before you you get to that point of buying, you definitely want to establish that relationship with a trusted realtor. Um, you want to have a um, couple of recommendations from that realtor, at least a couple, two or three, for lenders. Um, you, you really should start long beforehand establishing a budget, yes. um, not only a budget for your housing, but looking at your overall budget so you know where you're comfortable, so you know what is affordable to you. Um, you know, then you, once you've done that, that's when you should go talk to a mortgage broker or a lender. So what about location? We always hear about location, location, location. It's still true to this day. They've been saying it forever, but it, it really is 
I think where you should start when you're trying to define your, you know, your dream home. Um, location, location, location. It's, um, you know, it's, you should be establishing first and foremost where you'll be looking based on, you know, is it close to, to your workplace or, you know, your favorite um, hangout spots, family, whatever's, you know, your priority. Um, is it a safe area? Everybody wants to know that. And those are questions that you should be able to ask your realtor and they should be able to provide that information to you. Um, you want to find, you, most people want to find their home in an um, economically stable area. Um, and then, you know, a couple of things to take into consideration. Is it in a good school district? Because that affects value as well as, you know, looking ahead down the road. Uh, most people are going to be in a, in a house for over seven years now. Um, so, you know, things change a lot in that seven year period. And, you know, last but not least, is it a good investment in the long run? I mean, you want to pick a home that you love first and foremost, but in that you're going to find yourself comfortable in, but you want to know it's a good investment in the long run. Writing the offer, what should a buyer expect when they're ready to make an offer? Well, there's going to be a multitude of paperwork. <laughs> um, some of the some of the forms that you should expect to see besides obviously a purchase agreement or a purchase contract um, you're going to see a lot of disclosures disclosures for agency um, uh, disclosures for lead-based paint dis a seller's disclosure that you know goes over what the condition of the property is but there's no promises on that just keep that in mind um, and then there's also a, a multitude of addendums that might come into play if you're FHA or VA financing, there's a special addendum for that. If you're buying someplace that has well and septic, if you're buying a condominium, all of those have additional um, terms that need to be added to the purchase agreement. Um, in addition, each, each um, broker should have you know, broker exclusive um, documents. We at Cowell Banker have a um, buyer services guarantee. It's, and we have a seller services guarantee and a buyer services guarantee at Coal Banker Professionals. We guarantee our services. Um, I don't think that there's any place out there that, that does that, but you should definitely have signed that form at the time of making offer, if not before. And documents are very important because what happens on the initial documents that are filled out and signed are the documents that take you all the way through closing. And we know that once those documents are signed, we cannot go back right. and that is easily a binding, fix them. Especially that purchase agreement and those addendums, they are binding contracts. It's important to realize that. Um, your, your realtor really should be emphasizing that at the time. And in addition, the other thing that you're going to um, expect at the time of running an offer is you're going to have to provide an earnest money deposit. That earnest money deposit is applied towards your closing costs or your down payment, but it is really the, um, the backing behind your intent to purchase that home you know it secures that that intent so when choosing a home now that we've went through the process and we've went through the paperwork and we have an offer in now we have to choose an inspector if we choose to have an inspector a home inspection and, I know and we that always recommend that I mean even on new constructions we recommend that you have an inspection because there are things the, the inspection is not necessarily nine times out of ten you're not buying a new house but it is important because you need to know if there's a possibility of you know unforeseen expenses coming up or things that just you know happen on a on a day-to-day -day basis um, you want to know that they're um, certified um, there are two two um, uh, organizations that certify home inspectors out there um, you want them to be certified by one of those two companies or those two organizations. Um, they're going to come in and they're going to inspect the top or the house from top to bottom. Your your structure, your exterior, roofing, plumbing, electrical, um, heating and cooling. They're going to look at doors if your doors are squeaking. They're going to look look at your you know faucets are leaking. I mean, it really, it should be a top to bottom, inside out inspection. So you should be um, really secure with your choice of home inspectors going in. Um, after we do the appraisal process, we also have to get into homeowner's insurance. Another thing that you should be working on before you, know, you get to this point because it's gonna it, can, it can hold up your loan mm -hmm. process. You know, um, I always recommend to my clients that they start with whoever their auto insurance carrier is or if they already have homeowners, you know, start there. But it's a good time. You should get more than one or two quotes because it, it's amazing how much it can vary.
uh, insurance has you know nothing to do it's, it's not going to be the same from one company to the next so it's important to do your homework up front um, and it's going to be required by the lender again that's another part of the loan process so once the home inspection's done and the buyer decides that they want to go through with the purchase the bank's going to order an appraisal. Can you tell us a little bit about what the buyer yeah. and seller could expect from the appraisal process? Yeah, the appraisal is, um, it's one, it's required. It's going to be required by your, your lender 99% of the time. Um, the appraisal is um, going to give you a good loan to value um, threshold. And as much as it is, you know, it's a numbers game, it's not a science. It, it's not a fine science. I, I'm fond of saying that it's more of, more of an art than a science. Um, it, it, it is going to be um, simply taking comparable sales, comparable, you know, homes that are similar in location, size, features, you know, bedrooms, baths, and then um, based on those comparables, three to six recently sold properties, um, they're going to determine a value. They are also going to have your sale price, so they're going to know, you know, approximately what what range we're in. But um, it's important for the lending process. It's important. It it reflects on your your interest rate. It can affect that. Um, it can affect how much money you have to have down. You might have to bring extra money to the table. So those are all things that um, you know that happen normally. There's also the possibility that it won't support the value of the purchase. And then it's kind of like going back to the negotiating table again. Stacy, when going through the buying process, one of the most important things is choosing a lender to work with. Do you have a local lender that you could recommend? Well, as a matter of fact, we have a local lender with us today. Um, April Bynum from AmeriFirst Home Mortgage is here. Um, why don't we bring her in? Welcome back. Um, we're here with April Bynum from AmeriFirst Home Mortgage. Thank you for joining us. Well, thanks for having we me. We needed Susan. a professional to um, advise us on some of the lending issues sure. that, that we run into with buyers. Sure. Um, let's let's just start with what are what are some of the more popular mortgage options you have for buyers? Okay, so at Amerifirst, we're a mortgage lender. We have all of the mortgage options pretty much that you're going to find. Uh, for your first time home buyers, typically they look for low down payment mortgages. They just don't have the money saved up. It's their first house, right? And we want them to buy a house, so we try to make it very easy. Uh, those mortgages would be your FHA mortgage, your rural development mortgage, which is fantastic, zero down. <clears throat> Excuse me, the state of Michigan offers uh, a first time home buyer uh, $7,500 down payment assistance. So oh, we do awesome. that a lot at AmeriFirst too. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. What if I'm, what if I'm a um, second time or third time? Home Typically, you want to do a conventional mortgage. If you can, you don't have to. A lot of these programs are open to second time home buyers. You can do an FHA or you can do a rural development. But the end game, your second and third home, we would like to get you into conventional mortgage. Those are better terms, typically less cost. And if you can shorten the term, that's actually fantastic too. So you can go into a 20 year, a 15. Yeah. Eventually, um, you want it paid off, right? That's, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the, yeah. the goal in the long run. Um, what are your what are your rates your terms are they are they negotiable are they flexible sure well rates are so good right now i just wish that it's going to last i hope it really does uh rates are negotiable they they vary so if you call me one day they could be a little bit different the next day uh, everything's negotiable right in life that's just the way it is uh to a certain degree if there's a ridiculously low rate that you find online we might say okay let's get that in writing i don't think that that can happen but uh sometimes what we'll do yeah. online, <laughs> if you know? it's too good to be true it probably is yeah. uh a lot of times what we'll do, let's say that uh, you really don't have a lot of money to pay for, your closing costs are prepaid, so we may give a higher rate in return for lower closing costs, that sort of thing. But you definitely want to talk to your lender and make sure that you, the, the closing costs and the interest rate all fit in th what you're expecting. That's awesome. Um, what about like for those low down payment um, loans, FHA? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of buyers aren't familiar with private mortgage insurance. Can you kind of give us a rundown on sure. when that comes into play and right. 
how and mortgage insurance when we give you a payment and you're a first time home buyer and you're, you do not have the 20 percent down for a conventional mortgage you're going to carry mortgage insurance so your government programs your fha your rural development it's automatic you're always going to have that we're going to get that it's called the pmi the, or the mortgage insurance for you so anytime i have less than 20 percent down mortgage insurance is going to come into play mm -hmm. with government loans there it's required yep. for the life of the loan yeah oh, for, for the life of the loan for your oh. rural development and your fha va doesn't have any uh, monthly mortgage insurance which is fantastic but yeah it's on there for the life of the loan and it varies so rural development's cheaper than your fha so if you can get a rural development loan we'll definitely want to do that it's about half as much okay so it varies depending it on does vary so you when you're looking at your payment as a whole you got to consider that so if you're just looking online and it gives you principal mm -hmm. and interest you got to keep in mind you're going to pay that mortgage insurance yeah we run into that every now and then sure um do you guys do you guys have escrow requirements or is that with every loan or is it the only way to not have an escrow account so an escrow account is when we hold money for your taxes and insurance and then your private or your mortgage insurance is if you have 20 percent down and you have a conventional mortgage so if you have 20 percent down and you have a government mortgage you still have to have it uh, all government mortgages have besides the va have okay. the monthly mortgage insurance and is on there for the life of the loan all right and what kind of bill pay options do you offer at AmeriFirst? Yeah, so once you close the loan, we try to make it as easy as possible to pay the mortgage, right? Uh, so unlike renting, a lot of rentals, like your rent's due on the first. With a mortgage, you have a 15-day grace period. So at AmeriFirst, we can set up auto pay. You can pay it the first, the fifth, the tenth, or the fifteenth. Oh, that's so nice. So you can even go right up to the fifteenth. Uh, you can pay on the phone, pay by mail, however you prefer. Um, some people do buy uh, by monthly payments. If you do that, then you end up making an extra, I think, two or three payments a year too, which would help. Yeah, I've off heard. The of, I've heard mm -hmm. of that. That's that's a, a, often a good option for those yeah. that it works within their budget it's you know every other week but you still pay down your mortgage yeah because you don't even right? realize that you're paying more than yeah. what you need to so you're a little bit ahead of the game on that one if you can swing it and what can the buyer expect to be included in their mortgage payment well if you do 20 percent down and just a conventional mortgage and then that's just your principal and interest most buyers though, especially first time home buyers, are getting into their FHA, the rural development, and that talks goes back to the escrow account we just talked about. So your mm -hmm. escrow account is your homeowner's insurance, it's your tax bill, and then your um, monthly mortgage insurance. So you have four things, your principal and interest, homeowner's insurance, taxes, monthly mortgage insurance. The list of documents that mm -hmm. they'll need, we, we have a, a checklist that we give out to our sure. clients. Mm -hmm. It's usually a, a, a good little prep session before they come to you, right? You'd, you'd rather they came with those documents? Yeah, and that helps us. The more you have, the more solid your pre-approval is. Um, by the minimum I'd want to see is two pay stubs and last year's W-2. Um, little things that I can pre-approve without not having, I don't necessarily need to see a second form of ID, every bank statement, you have that sort of thing. So uh, we do like to validate the income. That's probably the most important thing to make sure that everything pans out. Okay. And will AmeriFirst service the loan or what company will service the loan? AmeriFirst services about 80% of their loans, but it is common for lenders to sell off your loan. So when a lender sells off your loan, it's really confusing. You close on a house with AmeriFirst, most likely AmeriFirst will service it. But if you get a, a coupon from NationStar or something a month later, you're confused. They sold out the servicing of the loan. So you would, the same terms apply, you just pay somebody else. Uh, AmeriFirst does service about 80% of the loan, but at any given time, a loan could be sold to somebody else. How about, let's, let's go to, um, again, we're kind of bouncing around, but back to the loan process. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that I can uh, do, like, let's say I want to go out and get new furniture mm -hmm. um, during, you know, for that new house sure. that I'm buying? Yeah. What would your recommendation be? To tell me before <laughs> you do it. <laughs> You say you buy a car, you might be living in it. So okay, that's... Um, no, you definitely want to be as transparent uh, with your lender as possible. Let them know before you do it, not after the fact. Uh, so many times we're scrambling after the fact, and sometimes it's fine. Sometimes yeah. they can well afford it, but once in a while, it's like, ooh, sorry, we can't buy that house now. Yeah. So yeah. Good question for your for your yeah. lender. Switching jobs. Uh, that's, that's another one. You, you get... probably don't want us no, to do that. No, you want to. Okay, so the credit cards that you have, that's okay. You can use your accounts that you have. It's when you open a new account or you switch jobs, you buy something. You, um, 
those yeah, those yeah. new items on a on a credit report. That yeah. If they showed up with another line, that's <laughs> right. probably not good. Right. So someone's applying for a mortgage and they show up with a you know shiny big red Jeep. I'm like, oh gosh. Yeah, true <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Before buying, people think that they should close accounts and shut down their credit. No, it's no. not good to do that. No, it's no. Good Keep your just, accounts mm. open. Pay them down, though. The lower your credit card balance is, the higher your credit score, typically. We want to see that you're using your credit cards. We don't want to see that you're maxing them out. Typically, if you go over 30% of the available balance, you're going to start to see your, um, or the available limit, rather, you're going to see your credit score start to dwindle a little bit. Is it, what type of credit is it more desirable to see on their credit record? What type of credit do we see? Uh, what's reported on the credit bureaus would be your credit cards, your installment loans, student loans. We see a lot of student loans, um, any mortgage. What's not included on a credit report would be utility bills, um, rent, unless you self-report. You can self-report, which could help your score yeah, too. Yeah, what if I am a, like a new, you know, first-time home buyer and I really don't have, I don't have a credit card and, Right. That's payment. a really good question. So let's say that you're just living at home. You've never had a bill in your life. You don't have anything bad, but you don't have anything good, but you have a job. If you have zero credit and have never like established any credit and not paying anything that wouldn't report, such as rent, utility bills, we don't want your first try with mortgage, to be a mortgage because that's, yeah. that's a really big thing. We want to see that you've had a couple accounts open for a year. Um, but let's say that you don't have any accounts on your credit, but you have a lot that you pay that wouldn't report. So that would be your utility bills, your rent. Then, then we would consider that. So from start to finish, when we send our client to you mm -hmm. for pre-approval so they can put an offer in mm -hmm. a home, how long will the whole process take? In the Right. Okay. So we could have a pre-approval done in 30 minutes if the clients just on on the on their game. They could have their W-2s, their pay stubs, everything to us. It's, that's not that difficult to get a pre-approval. Where you're saying longer times with uh, getting a pre-approval, it's that gray area. We need letters of explanation. We need they're not getting us their documents. Perhaps uh, we're working on the credit score or something like that. So that could take a little while, uh, but just if it's easy breezy. And after they are pre-approved and they put the offer in the home, how long till close, till they're at the closing table? How long? Typically 30 days, I would say. A lot of it uh, depends on the client. So if they're very quick at getting their documents, uh, the transaction will go a lot quicker. So, um, for, for our buyers, can you kind of explain, like, a, a lot of them do not understand that during the process they yeah. might be asked for everything but their firstborn child. <laughs> it's frustrating and, for and them, and it, for and sure. And, uh, yeah, often yeah. they get frustrated. Yeah. But can you kind of explain the, the thought process behind that and why you have to ask for so many documents? And it's right. Well, we have to, there more. was a lot of mortgage fraud back in the meltdown, right, where you didn't have to document as much with assets. A lot of the documentation we do is we go back two months in your bank statements. Um, and we want to see where your funds to close are coming from. So we get stuck on that a lot. Let's say that you just sold a car and you didn't document it. Mom gave you $2,000 in cash, that sort of thing. Um, that's where clients will say, why do you need this? Why do you need this? Why do I have to prove these deposits? So any unusual deposits we get hung up on a lot, uh, job changes, little things that they wouldn't think is a big deal. And that, it's not necessarily a big deal. It's just paperwork. It's validating everything that you told us to do. Um, we try to warn them as much as possible. This is normal we're not picking on you um, yeah. <laughs> we do it to everybody yes. Uh, but yes that, that can get tedious at times so now that we um, pre-qualified mm -hmm. they're at the closing table they close on their loan um, how much how does the client figure do you amortize how much they will actually be paying or the life of the loan? When they close, they get a big stack. It's called an amortization schedule. You can see the beginning of the loan. The first like years, you're just paying interest, and at the end, you're paying mostly the principal. Uh, if you're getting into a 30, you're almost paying double for the house if you never put anything additional against the principal of the, uh, the mortgage. So we try to advise if you can you know, throw an extra $100 on a payment, $50, whatever you can afford, because that will really chip away at that interest. But yeah, you do end up paying over the long haul. Is there anything you think that buyers need to know that we're not, we haven't covered? Uh, let's see. I would definitely recommend a buyer have a mortgage professional pull your credit instead of relying on the app. I think I mentioned that earlier. I wouldn't be so concerned about saving up um, as much as uh, for the down payment. Definitely have a couple thousand dollars. We want to do that, but get started. Let's make sure your credit's intact. 
uh, my hair a lot like, oh, I don't want to apply for a mortgage yet because I don't have all the money saved. Well, let's make sure all your ducks in a row. We don't want to finally get the money saved and then you're not being ready. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we're really easy to get hold of. Just give us a holler. There's no commitment. Is there just a few things that you could give us just to some no's and some things that they should do for their credit? Before yeah, house, definitely some... use your credit sparingly, but use it. Um, probably not apply for a bunch of credit cards right beforehand. Uh, have your credit checked by a mortgage professional. Like I said, I'll have a really good idea where you stand. I wouldn't necessarily, if you have some old collections, I wouldn't necessarily pay them off right away if you only have limited funds. You may want to save that money for a down payment and then just maybe work out a payment plan. So those are things uh, I hear a lot. Well, I'm gonna pay off this collection before I apply. Well, sometimes when you pay off a collection, your credit score actually drops because it re, it's like a fresh, brings it back to life per se. So um, just talk to me. <laughs> talk to your lender before. Yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And don't be intimidated. It's scary to apply for it. You know, you, you don't know. Um, so we understand that. So just walk you through it for sure. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, I um, if it. people want to get a hold of you, um, can you let us know how they would go about finding yeah. you? Well, I'm located right downtown Port Huron, AmeriFirst Home Mortgage. Uh, a lot of times people will just text me or call me on my cell phone. That's probably the best way. I always have it. 810-407-1444. And again, April Bynum, uh, downtown AmeriFirst. Thanks, April. Thanks yeah. for being here. And thank you for being with us today at Cobalt Banker Professionals. Um, if you need to contact us, you can always give us a call at 810-987-1424.